Can we focus camera? Thank you. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and I'm absolutely obsessed with beauty products. I try to put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday based on beauty products, beauty reviews, and panning. Today I'm really excited because I have a brand new foundation and a brand new concealer. Today I'm going to be trying out the new NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. This foundation comes with one fluid ounce, which is standard for foundations, and it cost $49 on their website. I purchased mine from Ulta. I got the shade Medium 1, which is the, the lightest medium shade, and it does have golden undertones. According to the NARS website, this is a 16-hour foundation that stays turned on by the power of radiance. This foundation is unlike anything else. High coverage is now supernatural, breathable, fade-resistant formula is infused with raspberry, apple, and watermelon extracts to help smooth and improve the look of your skin instantly. It says that this is ideal for medium to full buildable coverage, skin types all, and it has a natural radiant finish. It is supposed to be transfer resistant, sweat resistant, fade resistant, non-drying, paraben free, alcohol free, oil free, fragrance free, and non-comocomedogenetic. Okay, so if you'd like to see how the new NARS foundation applies and wears throughout the day, you're in the right spot, just stay tuned. So as I said in the opening, I have the shade Medium 1. I just swatched this in Ulta. The next one down was a little too pink of an undertone for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a couple of pumps. It does look a little light, and it is quite runny on the palette. I just use a, I sold the idea from the tailor and just took one of my candle lids and it's, it's really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom you guys in and start applying this to my face. So before we jump in, I'm going to go ahead and prime using my current favorites. I have the Too Faced Hangover RX and the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducer for just right here in my T-zone. Okay, so now that we are all primed and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and use my NYX sponge on this side of the face. And I'm going to use my Morphe M439 on this side of the face. So let's do, let's do the brush side first. So as you can see, I do have some breakouts down here and around here. These ones are just mostly scarring at this point. They're mostly like flat. Um, I'm just waiting for the coloration to go away. So let's try the brush where I have like the worst of my breakouts. So I am just going to take the foundation and dot it. It doesn't really smell like anything. It has like a light like makeup scent but other than that you can't really smell anything so let's just that is some nice coverage that is high medium coverage on the first layer and i think the color is actually like an exact match for me which is pretty rare okay so let's try to do a little bit up on the forehead see how that turns out with the brush I am loving the finish of this so far. It is, like, I don't feel like I'm wearing anything right now, which is very strange, but I am getting, like, low, full, high, medium coverage on this side. You can see this side compared to this side. And I'm, I'm absolutely loving the way it applies with the brush. I don't even think I'd have to really do a second layer. If anything, I would do maybe another layer right down here where the worst of my acne is. But overall, this is looking beautiful. So let me go ahead and I did use like the two, three pumps on just this side of my face with the brush. So I'm going to go ahead and pump out another couple and start using the sponge on this side. Surprisingly, I'm not getting less coverage with the sponge. Now, granted, the NYX sponge is a little denser than most beauty sponges, but I am seeing the same amount of coverage. So, sponge side. Brush side. So far, I'm loving absolutely everything about this. The finish is beautiful. 
It's drying down a little bit on this side, but it still remains a little bit tacky, so I will have to set it with a powder. But the finish, it's nice, it's radiant. It really is full coverage, like just with one layer. I'm also loving the shade. Like, I don't know if it's coming across on camera as well, but this really is like the perfect shade match for me, which is rare. Normally I have to mix a couple of shades together to get a nice match for me, especially when I'm this light. Well, let's try it down here. Let's see if it really is buildable just where like the worst of my acne is, just to see, you know, just, just for fun. So I'm gonna do two more pumps and just, I'll go with the sponge to see if it builds. It builds like a dream. Not sure if you can see that, but it's building up flawlessly. It doesn't look cakey. It doesn't look like I have two layers of foundation on, honestly. It doesn't even look like I'm wearing foundation. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the foundation at that and move on to a new concealer that I have to try out. This is the Ulta Full Coverage Liquid Concealer. Now this is the Ulta in-brand house of makeup. I haven't tried a whole lot of things from them. And honestly, the little things here and there that I have tried, I have not really been impressed with. But Jam Beauty 89, Jessica Braun has been raving about this concealer. And honestly, I was, I was really intrigued. So I'm gonna go ahead and try it out today. I got the shade light warm which is like the lightest warm shade obviously monica jesus christ it's called light warm okay so i'm just gonna do this under my eyes now so far it's looking like a nice shade match let's go ahead i'm using my nyx sponge to blend this out There is the concealer. I will say it is covering up my dark circles. Normally I put on like a color corrector underneath like a little light salmon color to cover them up but the concealer itself did a decent job of covering everything up and it did blend out beautifully. I'm not seeing any immediate creasing which since I have such fine lines under my eyes I do see immediate creasing with a lot of concealers. But so far, this is actually looking really beautiful. Today, I'm only going to be trying it out underneath the under eyes. Um, I'm not sure if I would spot conceal with this one just because of the shade. Normally, I like to pick a color that is a lot closer to my current skin tone to spot conceal as opposed to one that this this is a little bit lighter than my skin tone which is nice for highlighting okay so this is the full face of the nars foundation and the ulta concealer i'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my makeup and i'll be right back Welcome back guys. So this is the final look with the rest of my makeup on. I will say the finish of this foundation was beautiful, but it didn't dry down. It didn't what? But it did not dry down that fast. I waited a couple of minutes, but normally when I'm doing my makeup in the morning or when I'm trying to get out somewhere, if it doesn't set within five minutes, I'll just go ahead and set it with a powder. So I did set it with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder all over the face. This is the Luminous, or no, this is Diffused Light. Just kidding. Diffused Light. So I did set it with Diffused Light and then I did bake my under eyes with the, what did I use? So I did bake my under eyes with the Maybelline Fit Me Powder in 10 Light. The concealer did crease a little bit when I went to bake it, but as I said before, 95% of concealers will actually crease under my eyes, so it's not like a deal breaker for me. It just looks nice and natural underneath the eyes, and I think the powder might have something to do with it. That Maybelline powder has been my favorite to bake with for months now but overall i am loving you know the combination of the foundation and the concealer so i'm gonna go ahead and wear this the rest of the day right now right now it is 1207 so i'm gonna go ahead and wear this for the rest of the day i do have another couple of videos to film and i have um like a date night tonight we're gonna go see the shape of water and we're gonna i don't know where we're gonna go eat but i'm starving so we better go eat something good <laughs> so i'll see you guys at my next check-in hi guys it's monica from the semi future here unfortunately after i filmed like my entire first impression and went to do the wear test for the day i wasn't able to finish it as soon as i got home that night after the movie i got like this 
really horrible splitting migraine and I ended up going to bed like with my makeup still on like I took my medication and then just like went straight to bed which you shouldn't do that don't don't sleep with your makeup on it's not great for you so I just went ahead and kept the footage from the actual application since that was my first impression. I didn't want to completely scrap it, but I did wear the foundation, concealer, the same powder and everything again today just to actually film the wear test. So right now it is just about 6 o'clock. Just about 6 o'clock. I finished my makeup right around 5.30, so I'll just go ahead and call the check-in time 6 for today. I'll go ahead and do a couple of check-ins, hopefully one in natural light and then one at the end of the day here in my filming studio slash room. So I'll see you in the next check This check-in was at 12.15 at work. This is in natural lighting. As you can see, my nose did get a bit oily and right here on the bottom of my chin, you can see where the foundation was beginning to wear off just a little bit. Overall, I did like the finish. My forehead did look really nice and the parts, even the parts that were oily, it didn't look too oily. It just looked a bit dewy. Overall, as you can see, it does look really nice. My highlight contour, everything is still on and looking fresh. Like Cupid's bow area did get a little bit of creasing, but not really noticeable. Okay, so we're back in my kitchen for the last check-in. It is 3.53, so the foundation's been on for just about nine hours. Sorry about my hair, it's um, a little crazy. I did have to walk home from work in the, in the rain, which was fun. So anyway, I'm loving the way the foundation is sitting on my forehead after a full day of wear and on my cheeks. Highlight and contour and everything is still there. The only parts that I'm not really liking are along my chin and how oily my nose got. Now, I can't really fault the foundation for the spots on my chin because I was wearing a scarf and the scarf did come up right here. So it's not transfer proof, so you have to just keep that in mind if you are gonna be wearing like a big coat or a scarf or anything. So I don't really blame the foundation for this part but my nose did get really oily. I didn't blot, I didn't touch up at all today. So I do have combination skin, but recently, because it's been winter, my skin's been more dry. So I haven't actually been seeing a lot of oil come through, but my entire nose is oily. Now, a good point to point out is that the foundation's not breaking down at all. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, there you go. So the foundation's not breaking down, it just looks really oily. So I think if I were to blot or repowder throughout the day, it would be fine. As for the Ulta concealer, it did crease just a little bit underneath the eyes, but overall I am loving the concealer. I still have full coverage on the under eyes right down there. And it didn't interact badly at all with the foundation, which sometimes I do see along you know, the line where the concealer meets the foundation. So would I wear this foundation again? 100%. I am loving how well it sits up on the perimeters of my face throughout the day, considering I did put it through a lot today. I walked to and from work in the snow. It's like snowing now. So I walked in that. So I did walk to and from work one of the ways it was raining slash snowing and at work i was running around unpacking books unpacking boxes doing a whole bunch of stuff so for that amount of activity i am very impressed because i only did get a little oily on my nose so i would definitely wear this again i might try a few different powders with it just to see if maybe setting it with a different powder will make this last better throughout the day would i recommend this foundation Definitely, if it's within your price range, it is a little expensive. It's not the best high-end like foundation that I've ever tried, but it's also not the worst. The high points for me are um, just how well the shade matches me. You can see it does match my neck pretty well, so I don't have to mix this with anything. I, even some of my high-end foundations right now, I do have to mix just because I'm in like a weird in-between season kind of thing. So the fact that it's a perfect shade match and that it wears well throughout the day makes it worth it for me. If those are things that you're looking for, I would recommend this to you as well. So that is it for this wear test and first impression. I hope if you like the video, you'll go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. So thank you for spending today with me and I hope I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye.